and very pleased to be interviewing Leslie Wood, who is Chief Research Officer for Nielsen Catalina Solutions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Well, let's start with your background. How did you get to where you are today? I was a math major in college. Um, grew up right around here in the village. Um, my parents thought I should be an artist. They were artists, dancer and musician. Could not believe that I actually chose math. Um, but I think that's sort of the edge of creativity. Like I grew up being extremely creative and there was, it was always making things. Um, I needed to put myself through college and I couldn't type. So I got a temp job at Family Weekly Magazine as a way to pay for college. Um, I later worked at Telmar um, as part of my during college. Um, and the rest is sort of history. I spent um, 12 years at Ted Bates, uh, introduced computers to the uh, industry, which is sort of shocking. But um, we had never had a PC. Um, they had an Apple whatever. And uh, maybe it was called, a, yeah, I think it was an Apple. And then we, uh, we beta test sided uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3. And we had to wait six months because IBM had not yet made their first personal computer. So um, one of the first things I did was move most of what planners did onto uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3 learned, you know, that was a big piece of, so I've always been about data and always been about um, how, to, how to help people make better decisions. Um, and then Bates got bought and the world changed and I um, ended up being a, uh, I was so enamored with single source data and Scan America had come out and I decided to work with Scan America, and halfway through, before the data arrived, um, my husband suggested we move up to the country, and I thought, yes, I was ready to do that, um, and backer Spielvogel Bates at that point asked me if I would continue working on the single source data, and that sort of launched my um, consulting career. Um, I was able to, as a consultant, I was able to do several different major projects with single source data, the final of which was Project Apollo. Um, I, introduced, I did a, the Fusion Lab, which introduced Fusion to America. Um, I built many reach and frequency systems, both starting at Bates and then as a consultant. So it was really always about data analytics. It was always, and then I got my PhD. Um, my first, I actually produced a PhD on um, fusion. And they needed, I don't know, 12 more credits or something. And at the speed I could take credits, that was gonna be another year. And I said, I'm tired of doing fusion. <laughs> So I switched to doing uh, single source, and my dissertation's on single source in the project. Well, eventually you made your way to Nielsen from your yeah. consultancy practice. What do you do now at Nielsen? So um, I actually work for Nielsen Catalina Solutions, and they are a um, joint venture, half owned by Nielsen, half owned by Catalina. Um, the beauty of how it was set up is that we have access to all of our parents' resources. Anything they own, we can use, and in return we divide our revenue 50-50. So there isn't, it isn't a for-profit, we divide our revenue to our parents. Um, and that means that I have all access to all of Nielsen's assets, which most people are aware of, and then I have all the, I have the Catalina assets. We have to have a separate agreement with each of the retailers, but what Catalina brings to the party is a server in every supermarket, every um, drugstore, every retailer that we connect to. So our guardrails are that we have to be CPG and we are in the U.S. So that's, you know, the agreement is that we'll, st we'll be watching by, we'll always connect the, 
the watch side, the media side, and the purchase side. We're going to be U.S. and CPG. So if those, anything that crosses those three pieces is, is ours from our parent side. Um, and my job is, uh, you know, I took this job because it had the most amazing resources. I mean, who, who could have such phenomenal resources? So the, at the core, I've come to very, very strongly believe that you need to have all big data is amazing gives you a wealth of insights. But every big data set requires a currency representative small data set so that you can understand where your outage is. So for every set of data, we try and have big data and small data. So start with uh, household level data, purchasing. We have, um, we have home scan, so we have a currency, 100,000 households. And then we have our FSD data, all the frequent shopper, FS, frequent shopper data. Um, and the frequent shopper data, I have about a little more than half of the home scan households, I have their frequent shopper data. And I can see what are we missing. So home scan tells me I'm missing stores. I don't have the bodega down the street. I don't have the convenience store. I don't have some, I don't have every single supermarket. But I can also see that HomeScan doesn't have every single UPC doesn't make it to being scanned. So by having both parts, you can understand what part of the country, what kind of demographic, what, 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 are the, what is this asset? And I get to understand how to weight it, how to project it, what is it, what are its strengths. We do that with TV because we have a Nielsen people meter, and then we have large set-top box. We do it with digital. Um, print, we have um, subscription, and then we have purchasing, so we have primary audience. I'd love to have MRI connected in. We do have a plan for that, but um, love to have MRI hooked in. We have radio data through Nielsen Audio, which was Arbitron. Um, that's only currency data. We don't have yet a big data source for radio. Um, we have mobile data. Um, we have both in-app and then through our, um, our partners. So some is cookie match, some is direct match, and some is um, uh, user ID matched. Um, so we have all these pieces of data, and we connect all of them to the single backbone that's an ID for every household in the country. And that gives us an amazingly rich data source which I believe has incredible potential. So what drew me in was this potential. I've, I've believed that single source is amazing from way back when. Um, to me, if you were in an auditorium and you looked at an entire wall of an auditorium, that's kind of the potential for single source. And when I started at NCS, I sort of felt we had about a switch plate worth of in, you know, use of this. Today, I'd say we have a window and a door. You know, we have some pieces, but there's still enormous potential. So my job is to find the, find the ways to use the data. So I'm on a mission. Find advertisers that are interested in working on, with me on finding solutions to questions that are burning. The burning questions, the ones they actually and I'd rather they be questions that you want to know all the time. So there's strategic questions, and then there's tactical questions. Strategic is fine as long as it's a, an ongoing strategy question. The questions like um, where if you do one study and you get the number, you're going to be comfortable forever with that number, eh, that's okay. But I'm very interested in ways that we can drive real revenue from the potential of this data. And that's what I do, is I mostly do find advertisers, find media companies, find um, agencies that want to work with me, often in collaborating groups of these, to come up with solutions to large questions the industry has.